another rechargeable camping light. <laughs> this one's interesting because it combines the function of rechargeable camping light and it takes a couple of standard 18650s. I wonder why they did, didn't just extend it to take four. That would have been quite good if it had. But they've only allowed for um, two. That's strange. They're just completely random mismatched lithium cells I've put in here. And that's partly, I'm guessing, to deal with the issue they had at the time of... Well, they still have that issue that the Postal Service seems to frown on shipping things with lithium cells in them, so it kind of made sense to actually just take it, let it take standard 18650s. But this is good because it means that instead of them providing the shitty sub-1 amp power ones, we can fit much bigger ones. It would have been nice if it had taken the... Four, but we'll see why that is when we open it up. Now, this almost, the shape of it, this diffuser here, looks almost like a fluorescent tube. That's odd. I wonder why they've done that. Maybe just for that look. But you've got the uh, button here that turns it on. So it turns on in high intensity output. It is quite bright. Let me just, yeah, that's very useful. Uh, it's got low. Still useful for ambient reading. It's got the diffused. I'm not sure what that's for because uh, I suppose... It's a bit softer, and then you click it again, it goes into the sort of like the uh, hazard warning, which uh, is red and blue flashing LEDs and goes through a sequence. Okay. Does it have anything else? Any other secrets? Does it do SOS if we press and hold it? Um, no, it doesn't do SOS if we press and hold it. It does, however, display the battery level indicator when uh, it's either charging or when it's actually got one of the LEDs lit. So let's uh, turn this off. Let's take the batteries out. Let's open it up. N oh, no, let's not. Let's do a test first. Tester. Uh, we'll use the Unity one for this. Nice, I'll have to do it upside down. 5.14 volts, let's plug this in. Let's uh, zoom down in this so you can marvel at the result here. So let's turn the current up and see how it fares. Let's angle it over slight to try and make it brighter. This is where the Unity has that slight delay in responding. So that's 420 milliamps, holding up about 4.9 volts. Eight hundred milliamps, it's still holding four point eight four volts. One amp, it's starting to droop four point five four and the little L indicators come on to show. Let's see how far we can push it. It just cut off. So what was that? It was just barely over one amp. So I think that basically says one amp. That's what you get in. That's good enough. That's good enough for many things. It's got the little rubber covers that just keep popping open. Uh, they're not very they're not very secure, but having said that, I don't think the thing is really waterproof, so treat them just as dust caps. So let's uh, zoom back out and open this. Let's get the lithium cells out. Lithium cells are out. Yeah, strange that. That would have been nice if they'd uh, just allowed you to fill that whole thing up. Let's... Uh, no hidden screws under there. Let's uh, start taking screws out and part this thing for our edutainment. So there appear to be six screws in the back of it. Oh, it does fit. It does actually reach. That's quite good. I always thought that the screwdriver was going to bottom out there. The screws so far appear to be the same length. It's always nice when they do that. Mismatched screws, that is always annoying in products. Particularly if you don't actually observe where they were coming from. This is one of the advantages of filming everything. Ooh. Right. So there's absolutely no reason that they couldn't have uh, made that a uh, full... There's loads of room. It's even got the... I think we have to investigate this further. What the heck? I 
Uh, this does look like it's got the contacts for it. Let's use brute force nippers. Let's. It's now a four cell unit. Is this just an option to only use two cells? Okay, if you got one of these and uh, you thought it was only a two cell unit, it turns out it's a four cell unit. It suddenly has gone up in my expectations greatly. What do we have inside? Oh, look at that. They've divided it into two sections. What the heck are they using that chip over there for on the LED display? So I'm guessing that this is going to be the standard charging chip and that little chip over there is purely a voltage level indicator chip. Uh, this one here looks just like a button for switching through the modes. This uh, is possible. Right, let's, uh, let's get more out here. This is quite uh, actually more complex than I was expecting. However, it's worth investigating deeper now. Look at the, they've put an extra, oh. What holds that in? Is it just pressing against the back of the thing? Because this is just a extra aluminium that's, there's nothing actually really clamping that yet. Hmm. Other than the back of the case. Okay. That's worth noting because uh, it may be possible to, it might be better using a silicony glue or something like that to actually stick this on for better heat sinking. I would say is this image bright enough, but I know that as soon as I try and brighten up, it's going to be too bright because it's just so much black stuff. Black is not a great colour for, uh, for filming. So let's uh, keep these screws to the side because they are, they are uh, specifically this the size for the... Uh, for the circuit board, holding the circuit board in, it's not matching the other ones. So we've got some transistors in the back here that are controlling those LEDs. Those transistors are being switched probably by this little 8-pin chip underneath. So I'm guessing that maybe this is a standard power bank chip because it's right next to the inductor. Let's, uh, let's investigate that. It's not got a number on it. Shit. Uh, what about the one in the back? It's not going to number on it. Gee, that doesn't make it easy for their manufacturing, does it? What about this one over here? No number. Now, some of you mentioned that they would possibly the numbers underneath, but that does involve desoldering it to find if there's a number. I think, imagine they disappointed they desoldered it and found there's no number. But going by the pin out here, let's say I zoom down on this. Let's get closer. Going by the pinout, I'd say this is the chip that's not only been used to, I'd say it's probably a standard power bank chip. It's got a 2.2 microhenry inductor, and the battery voltage is probably being monitored. I did notice that when I plugged it in, it didn't seem to, the batteries were already fully charged. It didn't seem to go into sort of like the usual charging indicator mode. So I don't think that chip there is doing anything other than just detecting voltage levels and maybe it's a just a battery level indicator chip. The other four pin chip underneath, there's the two little contacts to the switch, which are ducking in and out as they do on double sided boards. But I'd guess they're probably going to this chip, which is probably then controlling these transistors uh, to switch the different arrays of LEDs. So you'll have the two transistors for the uh, the strobing red and blue. You'll have the one transistor controlling this chip here, but pulse and modulating it for different intensities. And then you'll have one transistor driving the uh, sort of circle of the LEDs. Again, is that, that's heat staked and that's how that one's fixed in. This plate is screwed in. What are those transistors? J3Y, J3Y. Oh, A2SHB, so that's a little MOSFET, which is probably driving the higher power outputs. So the J3Y transistors are almost certainly driving the strobing LEDs because they don't require much current. But they've used little MOSFETs and parallel clusters of resistors. Hold on. Uh, 
1 ohm resistors and 1.5 ohm resistors. 1 ohm resistors probably going to the center LED, I'd guess. That's this white wire. No, red and blue. That's uh, I, I'm uh, just mixing things up here. The 1.5 ohms are actually going to this. And the... Let's see, uh, I'm just, uh, let me just think loudly here. That transistor there is actually driving the circle of LEDs around the edge. With the, They're actually got the lower value of resistor, suggesting they're effectively lighting brighter. It didn't seem that, but then they are diffused. It's uh, it's interesting. Was I was I even on screen there for that? It's always hard to tell. Sometimes I go right down to the edge. I've noticed this in other channels as well. I used to be paranoid about that. And then I'd be watching other channels and I'd see them gradually drifting off screen. But you got the gist of what they were saying and I became less paranoid about it. Much easier than sort of starting the video of again and losing the the sort of like the element of discovery. Like when I discovered that actually holds four cells, suddenly it is most pleasing. That does look like it just latches in. I wonder why they did that. Is it just so they is it just so they can sell two versions? The sort of two cell and the four cell version, or is it just so that you can use it with two cells or you can optionally snap this out uh, for a higher number of cells? Dunno. That's very odd. But actually very useful to know that it can take for because that means it could actually, even though it can only put out an amp from the power bank function, suddenly the fact it's got the capacity, if you fitted that with ridiculous, you know, you could technically speaking, you could use four three amp hour cells and make it a, a like a 12 amp hour uh, battery pack, that suddenly becomes quite impressive. But yeah. It's a, it's a useful little light. It's quite rugged. It seems quite well designed. It's fairly textbook designed. So um, I think this is actually quite acceptable, particularly with that extra two cells. That does make it quite interesting.